a three, a two, and a one. I like that. A three, a two, and a one. Good morning, I good feel like good I'm being mocked. I'm not mocking. It's paying homage. This is a parody account. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello, and welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Today we're painting up Baron Helmut Zemo. He is, um, he wears a cool sock, socking top on his head. And he's got some black leathers. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I think I'm just gonna get a little sketchy with this one today. Um, like just play with some form and then just kind of pull it all together with a with like a glaze at the end. Um, and then maybe come back with a little final highlight. I'm just trying something different. Um, and he's got two different colors, black um, on him. So I'm gonna do like a more of a green emerald black and then more of a neutral uh, to like maybe slightly blue. Uh, it'll give it a nice contrast against the magenta of his mask. So instead of chatting about it, we should just talk about it. We're just gonna get sketchy. I wanna get a little sketchy today. I wanna have fun. I just wanna paint a Baron Helmut Zemo. I think it's H E L M U T because it makes me want to say Helmut. Why are you giggling? Why is everybody giggling? He's a he's Helmut. He's just a Helmut. He's a Helmut. Give him Helmut. All right, so I got a couple different types of black elements. So we want to treat them differently. So the very first thing I got a Zenith on here. I want to just start blocking in a, uh, a little bit of the shadow. And this like, I'm going to do like a Jade green. I'm not going to get real picky about this. This will all get glazed back together. We're gonna just slowly build up a little form. This is gonna be weird. I, I don't I don't typically paint like this. I don't know why I'm gonna paint like this. This is what I'm gonna do today. That sounds fun, right? Do something you've never done before. Try it out. Um, there's a lot of fantastic painters out there who sort of explore this kind of thing. I'm gonna take a little of the Pro Curl uh, gray blue and add it to my Dark emerald. Maybe a little touch of water. I'm going to put this in the mid tone. Right up on the highlight, let it overcast over on that shadow just a touch. And then we're gonna highlight a little bit more because that's what we're gonna do with this Baron Helmut Zemo. He's a Helmut Zemo. He's got a sword and he's gonna stick it in your head or something terrible like that. A little too aggressive for a family friendly show. There's no need to be like that, Helmut. A little more light blue. Blame it on Helmut, Dallas. Go ahead. There's a song there. Blame it on the Helmut. I like little scritchy scratches sometimes. It's always the helmet. This just gives a little texture. And then I'm going to turn this all black later as we progress. But I want my blacks to all be different. So I'm gonna have a gray black, sort of this green emerald black. 
They'll make a nice contrast with one another. Oh, how much? Rogue Hobbies, hello. Mr. Rich, hello. Seeker 911, sup, sup. So having a second go at Baron Helmut, Helmut. Zemo, uh, <laughs> what were some of the goals with, you know, using what we've learned since the original core set as a studio to bring a new Helmut to bear? So one of the good, one of the fun goals of doing the second core set was to like take all the lessons we've learned as a studio and just apply them across all elements. So like from graphic design and dev to art to sculpting, right? All that stuff just kind of got reanalyzed and was like, well, what can we do? What can we do now? So it was, it was much a, if Marvel Crisis Protocol was like new, and no one had ever seen it. What would the box look like if we were to do it today? And, you know, it was just time for a refresh in the first place. Um, mini games, you know, need refreshes from time to time. Let's get a little bit more. Let's get a little heavy white in there. Um, and it was just taking the characters and seeing where else you can go. And like, sometimes it's not about more action. You know, it is more action. Even something like Captain Steve Rogers, even though his new pose is stoic, it, it just was a more sense of what the character could be. Um, and that was super important to get in this new corset. Just take all those, like I said, all the, all the, tidbits all the ideas and philosophies like we have philosophies for each of our things that we do and apply them across the ventures so getting more dynamic when we needed to pulling back when we needed to getting more um you know working in the material also we had five years experience working in hard plastic at that point so being able to come in and really crank up our understanding of what the material can do um, would just was just super important to us. You know, really putting that AMG stamp on the core box. And there's a question sort of related to us. Uh, Beast Jimbo, I guess the answer is it's their job. I love to know how the sculptors get so much motion in the miniatures. It's a lot harder. Uh, motion is super hard in miniature. That's absolutely true. You're talking about something that is just viewed from 360 degrees at every moment and is completely stationary and static. Um, and that's a very tricky proposition, to be perfectly honest. Um, even if you take, like, Olympic athletes, if you freeze frame them, they look silly in mid-action, right? And so making sure that the body in motion feels cool, I guess is the only way to really say it. It's got to feel cool, um, is, the, is the most important part. Um, a lot of it has to do with just learning how to twist the form without breaking it. A lot of comic book images break the form. And what I mean by break the form is like, the spine is actually broke or the leg isn't really in a place that it could be because the perspective is drawn. Or a lot of times like, Spider-Man is drawn like crouching, but the view, the angle, the camera's like looking up at him. So it makes the crouch look super big and dynamic. And of course, if we crouch Spider-Man, he's gonna look tiny, tiny on the base. So, it's, it's like one of those things like we always think about. And it starts really in concepting. 
um, we have a group of people who work together to concept stuff. Let's get a little... Uh, let's get a little blue-black and a little dark neutral gray. Is this one open? Nope. Got to open the little wrapper on the profil. I'm getting paint all over myself. I'm a messy hobgoblin. Where was that? Oh yeah, posing. Um, we start out in the concept phase and you have um, a team. Our art directors, Josh, Preston, me. Occasionally you get um, Tony. We'll get in on that. Sometimes we invite sculptors themselves. Um, but we start out and we just draw a whole bunch of poses. And that's not always true. Sometimes it's just one pose. Sometimes you just draw one and you're like, that's the one. It's done. There's nothing more to add to this conversation. Um, sometimes you get lucky like that. Um, but you draw like one pose and, or you draw some poses. Then we kick them over to the engineers and sculptors and we discuss like, okay, so if we want to do this, right, like what are some of the pitfalls you see as an engineer? And the engineers will be like, well, really what's happening here is, you know, yada, 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 this, this, this. And then we make some adjustments and then we push it. And then sometimes they're like, well, that's not good. Like, like why did you draw that? And you're like, I don't know, honestly. I'm, I'm, I don't know why I did it like that. And then we have a conversation about it and we try to push and get the best poses we can out of the miniatures. Like I said, sometimes you just get done the first time. Sometimes it's just literally like you draw a pose and it's just you stare at it and you're like, I don't think I can do better than this. And you send it to the group and the group is like, yeah, that's the one. And, and then other times you draw like six and everybody goes, yeah, but so take A and do like five more iterations of A. And you're like, well, B was my favorite. And everybody's like, yeah, but A is, and then, you know, then you have me like working with people being like, we got to think about the base sizes and we got to think about like the rest of the miniatures in this wave and how are these going to look together in the in the box next to one another like stuff like that so it's a lot of it's a lot of conversation and a lot of work and it's a lot of people pushing each other never thinking you're done never thinking you've got it figured out being humble you know everybody's just learning and a new lesson every day and trying their best and you know, you just want to develop and grow and push each other and soar to new heights. New heights. It's, a, it's, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of, it's sort of creative, but it's also like the big thing is like being open to like criticism. I don't think, I don't think we were really taught how to take criticism and what criticism means, right? If I'm like, if I'm like, Tony, that pose is not good. That doesn't mean Tony's not good. It's just that, that pose, like, let's think about it. Like, okay, now let's think why the pose isn't good. What should the pose be? How can we push it? How can we make it better, right? It's a desire for, uh, for never giving up, never surrendering, always being wanting wanting more and being the best we can be uh, there was a question about brushes yeah i use monstrous brushes i i see no need in tiny brushes ever for myself you do what's comfortable for you 
as someone else, else pointed out, like do what's comfortable for you, but I'm not a tiny brush person. Um, I, I, it's too tedious for me. I like a, I like a size one, two, three. I like getting in there. You know, I'll paint, I'll paint, uh, I'll paint an entire face with a size two, including the eyes. That's not a problem. So you tested poses of person. There's a lot of standing up and taking pictures of each other. Um, honestly, um, like that's just something you do. You, you stand up, you got to look in the mirror sometimes. Um, there's a fantastic trick of drawing like circles around your arm and like looking in a mirror at the way foreshortening works. Um, how much time, uh, we're going off. How much time is spent in source material checking? Uh, there's a lot of time in source material. Um, I don't, the goal is never, would they do this exact pose, but more, does this feel like something? We're not trying to, we're not trying to copy the 616, right? We're not trying to just do, well, this is exactly what you see in the comics. So we're, we're doing that too. Um, you know, as Schick said yesterday, the, the Iron Man, the corset is sort of a, collaboration with Marvel on a, kind of our own take of an Iron Man suit, right? It's, it's got a couple different parts all put together to make sort of our version of Iron Man. Uh, I think everybody pretty famously knows that the Agent Widow is a completely unique design to Crisis Protocol, right? We want Crisis Protocol to feel like itself and it's, it's a place where these characters live and that's very important. So, you know, you don't, we're not worried about, did they do this pose, but more, does it feel like it? Does it feel correct? Like there's a philosophy behind Spider-Man that I like to have when we're talking about Spider-Man. Spider-Man should feel like a, a sprung spring or a spring about to sprung, right? He should be a coil or an unleashed coil. Like that's what makes, and, and Spider-Man should never be in a pose that I can do. Like that's just that's just ridiculous. If we if we have if if I can do the Spider-Man pose myself, we we're not doing Spider-Man right. Uh, who had the hardest pose in the new set? What do you mean by hardest? Can you clarify what do you mean by hardest? Because I don't that word's a little confusing for me, honestly. I think what they might mean is who. Whose pose was the most challenging to nail down? To nail down? Yeah. Uh, so let's go through. Iron Man was pretty quick. We knew, we kind of knew from the beginning kind of what I wanted Iron Man doing, right? Like having discussions with Schick and previous Iron Man, like we kind of knew what we wanted Iron Man doing. Um, Schick, I remember, I think had a, a couple images in his mind and we kind of iterated upon those. Cap, Cap was done. I actually had Cap from like leftover, leftover, um, and just pulled that out. That was just like, this is Cap America. Uh, we had another one though. We had, we had two and it was, so it was choosing those. I think Black Widow was the most extreme where it was just like, uh, the story in the core box, the new core set is sort of Ultron focused. And, you know, the, the, the Black Widow crouch was like very much like on the mind, like the little pose she does. I love in the Black Widow movie how uh, her sister keeps saying poser and does the, the three point stance. That was kind of there, but I really wanted something more action-y for Widow. And with all the Ultron stuff, it just kind of came about sort of sort of out of the blue, like this idea of this Muay Thai kick. And it was just sort of the, you know, we kind of, we kind of like having like a bell curve in the miniatures, in the poses. Like, you know, you have like, you have like super action here and you have a bell curve and you have like low action here. So you have like your Luke Cage and your Captain America. And then you go up and you have your Zemo like this. 
And then you have down here, you have your amazing Spider-Man and your Black Widow. Um, and and Widow is like the moment, like, like if you look at the new corset, it's kind of like a bell curve of every philosophy across all 11 mentors. Um, so you have grunts and you have, you know, this Muay Thai kick, which is like the upper limit of like, I won't even say upper limit because we're Atomic Mass Games. There is no upper limit. We have not found our upper limit. Matt's in here taking photographs and I think he agrees. Yup. Yup. He, he gave me a yup. We don't the, know our limits. One of the nice... That's where we're at. And we I'm, don't know our limits. And that's why we're testing it. And oh I will not be happy until the sun melts my wings. Okay, Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bud. Or my face burns off. One of the two. That'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Just full on Terminator 2. Like, just up against the fence. Just blast. No? Oh, no. I was getting ready to just blast back. Oh, that'd be great, too. <laughs> just give me a... Just, I, I just give me a cosmic cube and like let me hold it for like five seconds. And bleh, I'm done. <laughs> well, one of the things about the core the corset that's great is that it does follow that curve, and it means that um, some of the the players who are going to be new to the hobby will have some miniatures that are less challenging to like navigate to start with and practice, and you know build up to some of the more super dynamic poses potentially i mean people should paint however they want to get through a set but i know for me personally um where i back at the beginning of my painting journey that that it would be really great for me to like be able to start on a um on an iron man or a uh cap and you know move towards a zemo sure yeah i mean like it's it should be Everything should be a bell curve of like, so you, you give like lots of options. And like somebody mentioned up here, um, was it at uh, the action poses tell a story on the battlefield rather than looking like, yeah, it's, it's a story. It's a story. It's Marvel Crisis Protocol. A crisis is happening. It's a story. And that's the beautiful part. And you get to tell your story, right? Like, oh, this Mr. Sinister carry around a tube that he stepped out no he just dropped it on the ground like and like you don't know what's going on like doc ock he's doing science right we talked about that story the other day when i was painting doc ock right he's like in my mind i'm like peter parker's up against the wall the mask is torn he's he's like he's at the end of the fight and and and, and ock is like you think you beat me peter but i've not even begun and he whips out these vials and peter parker's like i don't even know what he's going to do and you don't know what he's going to do you don't know what those vials are going to do are they going to blow up the city are they going to mutate him i don't know yet tell me the story so yeah giving people anyways what you were saying giving people an expression to explore and go places with their mentors is super super just built into like the the atomic mass philosophy so we want people to ex explore try new things give it a go see where the hobby takes them it's a, it's a wonderful little journey that you get to go on dallas in the mood today what are you talking about you're high energy but i also love that today so. am i high energy today you seem it you see, you seem jazzed. I've only had one pumpkin spice latte. Well, that's our problem, bud. We gotta I go get two. another after the stream. I need two. <laughs> Dallas and I are the pumpkin spice crew. That's a fact. Yeah, you can join. You want to join the crew? Matt's yeah. in the crew. The crew is open to all who would like to partake. It's, it's a not PSL an exclusive posse. Group. Yeah, pumpkin spice posse. Yeah. <laughs> well, hashtag not sponsored, but. Yes, that would be excellent. Pumpkin spice is just cinnamon and nutmeg. I got that in my cabinet at home. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. Iron Man was tough for me as it looks like that non-metallic Mel. Um, I went metallic on my Iron Man personally. Um, I love a good metal undercoat and then use glazes. 
of colors to bring that bring it to life so I, I actually prefer true metallic metal myself um and chick kind of spoiled it yesterday uh i am thinking about teaching a true metallic metal class at adepticon um so that'll be pretty dope if you're interested in learning how to do true metallic metals um i love true metallic metals i think i think done properly it's a mix of non-metallic and true metallic that makes it really really work um so you're using like the non-metallic metal philosophies but you're using true metallic paints to um um administer the philosophy and you get a more dynamic look so i i, I like a, i like actually using real metallics on my Mm -mm 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 -mm. Are there any comic artists that you feel often inspire the team? Oh, that's a great question. I am a sucker for um, Sam Keith and the Cuberts. And I think sometimes you can see some Cubert in the art direction around here. Josh and I uh, really love that. Adam and Andy Kubert stuff. Um, oh, who's the other one Josh really, really loves? Um, Battle Chasers. Um, what? Joe Madera, yeah, did, a, did an excellent run on X-Men. Josh really loves Joe Mad. I love Chris Batello. Patello. I like a lot of that stuff for posing as well. Chris Patello is like really good at posing and then like trying to like figure out a way to like interpret that pose and uh, bring something to the miniature because miniature does not translate like 2D art does not always translate into 3D miniature. Um, It's just not as simple as that, right? Like, you look at a 2D, like, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 300 would be a very difficult miniature to pull off. And it's not going to look the way you think it's going to look. It's, it's just not. So, taking some of these cool comic books and, like, paying homage to them, um, which we have done in the past, uh, Beta Ray Bill, for example, is a definite homage to um, Thor 264. Oh gosh, I own this comic. I have a wonderfully graded version copy of that too. Oh man. Um, it, it, it's that cover, but we had to modify it just ever so slightly to like make it work a little bit better for a miniature. Um, miniatures, I don't typically like to crunch up torsos. It makes the miniature feel smaller. Yeah, sometimes the tactic card art is definitely gets inspired by scenes from the comics Jess does a very good job of like getting those tactic cards to tell a story some of the photography has always been got that little sense of like that little story that you're familiar with in there too I need a drink I need a sip Where else are we at? Worthy with the new Ultron bots and Widow. Oh yeah. You have a feeling we'll see those. Got a feeling. 
We are super excited about the Path of the Worthy panel. We spent a lot of lunch talking about it, so that'll be a fun part of Mini Strav. Kind of kick off our road to Adepticon and the next Path of the Worthy. So much road to Adepticon. So much road to Adepticon. The road to Adepticon starts the day after Adepticon, weirdly enough. It never ends. Mm -hmm. I've never tried the, um, I never tried the um, Pro Acryl Transparent Black. I just tried it. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. Get some of these grays. You're hoping Nightcrawler is out by the time of the worthy? I don't know when Nightcrawler is out. I'm not sure when he's out either offhand, but as per, you know, always, I know Stryker, you've heard this many times. We can't talk about the exact dates things are coming until it's time. Not till it's time. Sick did. Sick did, um. Winter Soldier in an hour yesterday for Tabletop. I'm going to try to do Zemo in an hour for Tabletop. So far, I feel like he's in his ugly phase. We all know the real secret to why you wanted to paint Zemo today, and it's because of all that magenta. Look at that magenta. <laughs> Magenta is just the best color. I'm sorry. It's just true. That's just science. Honestly, the, the palette today is, is a vibe. Just all the colors on the palette. You can barely even see those on the miniature soon. I'm going to keep blacking out the uh, that teal. Man, my brush is a mess. I'm, I'm using the worst brush. I was supposed to replace this brush last week, and I didn't. You guys are playing chicken with those brushes. You both, both you and Chick, talk about them every. Okay. <laughs> every First stream. off, the fact that you didn't defend my honor yesterday hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm so sorry. These brushes here in this cup, these are all Chick. These are not mine. Zero of these are mine. I bring my own brushes in my little. My little crate that I bring every day. Yeah. I bring my own brushes to this room, and then I leave. I, d I did not know oh, whose you didn't know brushes that. were whose, and I didn't want to get involved. I feel like you're you're both adults, and you can fight your brush battles. N no. Um, but I will defend you from here on out, now yeah, that I know. Those are his brushes. The ones that he was accusing me of ruining, those are his. I don't touch his brushes. I don't let nobody touch my brushes. I'm not a monster. Gross. I Beast. put my brush in my mouth. <laughs> uh, Beast asks about the background music. The background music is is just some royalty free um, music. We use a you know subscription to a royalty free thing, but you can find you know lo fi beats and things like that to chill to on YouTube. If you like that, that was my inspiration. Um, for the music that we had here that would just be pleasant and relaxing. So I'm glad that you find it so. Oh, man, I, I lo-fi beat when I paint sometimes. You just got you just got a vibe. It really does. I, I like that, and I like, like, synthwave beats to chill to if yeah. I'm, like, writing up. A transmission or something. Just need those beats. 
And then other times I'm just like, and now I need just hardcore death metal. And then sometimes I just need ABBA. Oh my God, I'm using literally the worst brush in the world. So I purposely want a lot of squeaky lines. Was it a brush that Shik touched? I don't know, I don't touch his brushes. Ugh. Offended. I think I need another coat of black on the undersuit. I'm still learning to use this um, this uh, monument transparent. Another coat. Great gods, that brush is just the worst. The question is if I whine enough, will Tony just bring me a new brush? It's so hard to paint on camera because I can't turn the mini upside down. Burp, burp, burp. This piece, this, this, this piece, don't get to catch the streams much. Sorry to hear that. We stream when we can. Well, people will have plenty of chances to catch us streaming next week during Mini Stravaganza, the 14th to the 16th. All of our programming is out. Um, there's going to be a huge focus on um, just getting as much behind-the-scenes info as we can and making roadmap announcements. And Dallas has a lot of painting lessons and hobby lessons planned. The entire program schedule is out. I'll put a link in chat, but decide what you want to come see and come hang out. And anything you miss will be on VODs later on YouTube, so you won't actually miss it. And there is description for all those. Like, you don't have to look at just the calendar. There is a, there is a description for each thing. Yeah, I put together um, the link that just went into chat is basically our program. So it has the basic schedule if you just want something to look at. And then you can see exactly, not exactly, obviously, we're keeping a few secrets a for the secrets. actual event. But um, you'll be able to see sort of the vibe for each panel and the direction it's going to go. The real question is who will blurt out what that was unplanned to be blurted out? Who do you think? I mean, typically my money is just on Schick. Me or, or Josh. Man. Big money. See, Seeker knows. Big money is <laughs> on Schick. Yeah, my, my money is on Schick because Schick will just sort of like decide that. Today's the day. Today's the day. Um, I would also say that people who are not on stream as much, um, like Josh, maybe Marco, um, might say something, but usually if you're not on stream as much, then you're super clear about what you're going to be talking about. So I don't know. Shake still seems like a good, 
a good guess. It, the money would not be on me. Do not put money on me. I am, I am a steel trap of secrets. I will say, uh, without revealing anything, that roadmaps are not the only panels that may or may not have cool reveals in them. So they're the ones that have the most kind of what to look forward to in them, but you will want to stay frosty or stay straight, stay watching the stream if you want to catch all of the morsels of delight we have planned. Can you put a number on the number of secrets? No, that's a secret. If you ever catch me at a convention, ask me to share a secret with you. I actually probably could put a number on the secrets, but I shan't be revealing it. I have a very specific canned answer for when somebody goes, can you tell me something cool? Should we chat? Should I pretend that I'm approaching Dallas at a show or Dallas, do you want to just surprise people when they find you? That's up to them. And they, do they want to know what, what happens when you ask me for secrets? Or do they just want to ask me for secrets? A little more gray added to the bone color to go into the shadows of the boots. Dallas telling me something cool. See, they're just doing it. It's not as fun. I think I get mad at me once because of what I said, too. So, I don't know. This is not the normal way I paint, not at all. But I'm trying something different today. Cause why not? It's what I wanna do. It's my miniature, I do what I want. That's what I do. I do what I want with my miniature. Tactical Taylor from the PC and Sup Sup. There's definitely a stream that Tactical Taylor and those guys will be interested in. Dan, Dan in particular, will be interested in. There's a tease. <laughs> BG says, the worst thing about mini strav is the time difference. And I 100% identify with that. But again, everything will be available after the fact on VOD. So even if something's too early or too late, uh, it will be available later. And we will also be attempting to do bullet points for some of the larger announcement streams um, so that if you want to kind of review what was said, then you will be able to do that. Not much we can do about the time difference. Sorry. This team staying up till two o'clock in the morning is not what you think it would be. It just gets real nappy. Everybody just wants to lay down with a pillow. There'd be less secrets revealed.
Yeah, we gotta get up in the morning and do it. It's the only way to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna be up super early, turning turning all the lights on, getting everything ready. Uh, but that's that's how I like it, honestly, for show days like this. We didn't we didn't choose the Seattle life. The Seattle life chose us. Added some white to the ivory. Honestly, we should get PSL orders during Mini Strav. That's a great idea. Fact. How many tummy aches will I get? Texture on the belt. I know you can't see it. Do the front too. The chat paused, I don't know if anything's happening. <laughs> and can you see this chat screen? Chat screen? It's a uh, it's not, it's, it's above where the chat is happening. Oh, sure. yeah. I don't know if there's anything going on. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I don't get it. There's always going to be multiple versions. That's just the way it is. Accentuate those little eye lines. Accentuate the little lines in the cloth with literally the worst brush in the world. Venom verse minis are like venomized characters. Those are really cool. Some really neat designs. His name is Zemo. Oh, they forgot Zemo's in. How do you forget Zemo's in the corset? Oh, he's so good.
It's like, would you like some rerolls? Well, yes, yes, I would. Thank you. How much? Thank you so much, Helmut. This Zemo has a sticky gun and it's amazing. They literally has a glue gun. And it's awesome. Her talks are doing a painting competition for MCP like you did with the Legion Vehicles. What do you mean by competition? The, are you talking about just a hobby blog there, Birkenhoff? Big Ron Hoff. I don't know if that's what their name means, but it is now <laughs> Big Ron. Um, there are lots more uh, challenges. Like, yeah, it's not technically a competition. It's we're really only competing against ourselves in those, but there are more hobby challenges planned. They will come as they come, but obviously our, we're always trying to make sure that we can do those around, you know, make it, making the cool games and stuff <laughs> for y'all as yeah, well. Yeah, there's so. other stuff that has to be done. We do have one planned, a mm -hmm. MC piece themed. I'm just gonna spoil a little bit. Sure, go for it. Um, but it's going to be after main extravaganza before you like ever even see anything. How often do you get to play and is it busman's? I don't know what that means. Busman's holiday. It's a, I don't know what that means. Yeah, that, I think that's a UK slang that might not make sense to us. Um, we do, like, some of us get to play test if we're available. Um, and then, obviously, people have their hobby time outside of work, too. And lots of people play on weekends and play, you know, our games and, and other games. We, as a studio, genuinely like to play together. Um... It sounds like a great time, and it is a great time. I'm not trying to, but it is also work. It is very much work. Yeah, there's there's definitely a, while playtesting can be fun, right? Like, we're looking at it from, You're not playing a game. Yeah, we're looking at it from a very specific perspective. Playtesting play is not playing a game. I mean, for certain people, but for, like, when I play test, it's not playing a game. It's... It's it's not like playing a game at all. There's a lot of things that happen in play test that doesn't happen in a normal game. And even when you're making cool stuff, right? It is it is fun. I can't find my black. Where's my black? Um it is also work and it's and it is treated as such. Uh just to be fair to those of us who have to do it. At, my alarm still goes off at 5.30. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beasts, thank you for understanding that, uh, or for helping us understand what you meant. Um, Beast says, a busman's holiday is UK slang for when leisure activities become like work. Mm. I think we all find a balance. Um, but I know, Dallas, you talk a lot about how, like, whether you're here or at home, like, this is pretty much what you'll be doing because that's what you genuinely enjoy. Yeah, I mean, it is. But it still becomes work, and I still want mm -hmm. a vacation. Um, you know, I still want, I still take time to do stuff for myself, play video games, and 
Yeah. I play a selection of other games as well. Um, you know, card games, board games, stuff like that. But I don't know, I, 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 I always get worried that somebody on the outside, especially if they're thinking about getting into mm -hmm. the industry, thinks it's all fun and games. It's a, it's a job. And, oh yeah. And I remind people that they have a deadline and a job to do. Yeah, the, the key is, I think, there is, like, a mindset around when you're doing something for work. And certainly when we're, um, when we're asking people to participate in those challenges, we're hoping that, you know, we're catching folks who, who would be genuinely interested in doing those things regardless. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's also the idea that we want to keep fun fun mm -hmm. um and so the way that i the way that i'm when i'm painting miniatures even if they're uh are miniatures when i'm painting at home you know how i'm looking at it at the time when i'm you know having my me time i get to paint whatever i want whenever i want right um but things that i'm painting for work i like try to put in a particular time bucket um because i do want to make sure that i'm doing you know, we're all trying to keep a balance here for ourselves, for sure. It's very important. A little dark line goes a long ways. So a tabletop game is your holiday ideal? Uh, I mean... I play, I still play, I play Marvel Christ Broke a lot on the weekends with my partner. But I assume, you know, when you're playing at home, you, you're you getting to play exactly what you want to play. You're not like testing for a specific thing. You're Sometimes I test at home. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. We don't talk about DOS's inability to work life balance. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a constant effort, I would say, but it's different for everybody and everybody has to manage their own balance. So it's a little darker black on those pants and the undersuit. He's coming together. He's got a long ways to go. Not a long ways to go. He's got a little ways to go. I'm just kind of dark dark lining everything a little bit right now. I really need to throw this brush away. I really do. Man, he does not skip leg day. No, look how good of a runner he is. <laughs> He's a jogger. Look at him. Leap. Dallas, they want to know what your non-job related hobby is when you need a break from everything. Naps. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> one word, one syllable. Naps. Naps. I like to go, uh, I like to go like little cabins in the woods kind of things. A lot. A little getaway time. Yeah, I think the change in environment is huge. Mm -hmm. We have the islands nearby here and they're gorgeous to go visit.
Dallas, it would appear that we've we've reached the end of our special time. Are we out of time? Together. Listen, if you need a couple more minutes, that's okay. I'm just I'm I'm warning us all that the the closing time song will begin playing. Oh gosh. Soon. Um I think I think uh I think the only thing I really have left is I need to shade the white parts. So like the gloves. The yeah, belt. go for it. No, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that later. Probably this weekend. Uh, I will say, I feel like this is one of the most table ready, uh, close, cl closest to table ready we've gotten on a paint stream in a while. Yeah, lately it's not been, I've not been going as fast. Well, we've also been teaching like very specific yeah love like lessons and things um so i think i want to get a shade on the whites because i got like two colors on there three colors on there i need to just tie it together i think i need to darken the teal but i kind of like the brighter teal but i think it does need like a little bit hit in the shadow the black uh maybe one more punch of highlight on the magenta i got paint his crown and his eyes Paint the sword, and then I think he's gonna be done. I think it's very, very close. Uh, teal and magenta just look super good. Well, it's more of a, it's a jade to teal kind of color. It's it's a little mi weird mix, um, using the um, um, dark jade and the gray blue from Monument, um, and then a little black. I just think I need a little more black in there just to give it that rich deepness. Maybe even put a little of the jade into the black. For the final shadow uh eyes highlights on the magenta i need to do his little crown need to do a sword uh finish off the the white leathers and then we're done he's pretty close not bad not bad and not bad did everybody learn anything today what did we learn we learned that next week as a refresher this is a re this is the end of the end of the lesson refresher Remember next week, mini extravaganza is due, so be sure to tune in for that. That is going to be two, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday is our normal Twitch days. Time of Mass Transmissions Live. You check us out that at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday and Wednesday. But, but not next Tuesday. But Wednesday. not next week. Not next Tuesday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. because you're going to get Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I never come to the office on Thursday, Friday. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be really weird for me. Um... Next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're going to be streaming for hours a day uh, for mini extravaganza. We're going to have a lot of wonderful reveals. We're going to do some painting. We're going to do some talking. We're going to show some stuff off. It's going to be a good time. You're going to meet a lot of people that make the games that you love come to life um, and the miniatures that you love to work on come to the a point in the process in which you get to bring it to life because you're going to paint it yourself. Um, so be sure to check us out then. Uh, also, for all the latest news, information, and announcements from Atomic Mass Games, check us out on Twitter and or the Instagrams. That's where we post stuff. So until next week on Mini Stravaganza, I, I need everybody to say Mini Stravaganza. I'm going to count three. One, two, three. Mini Stravaganza. I bet somebody said it. I bet somebody did. So check it out next week, Mini Stravaganza. Get ready for it. It's going to be awesome. Goodbye. Goodbye to the mini Strava. Wait, not bye to the mini Strava Ganza. Hello to the mini Strava Ganza. It's time for mini Strava Ganza. Gonna paint some mini Strava Ganza.